And we'll start by saying, I want my country back. Over the last year or so, I've had to do a lot of soul searching on my political journey. I think it wasn't really a surprise that Lee Anderson was going to leave the Tory fold. He'd already been thrown out and, uh, from the party whip for what he said about Sadiq Khan and Keir Starmer, it has to be said, about Islamists being in control of them and London. And of course, he'd already resigned as a deputy chairman of the Tory party and wanted to vote on a Rwanda bill a different way from the party leadership. So perhaps it was inevitable, but that doesn't mean because it was a, wasn't a surprise that it wasn't a huge shock. The shock waves have gone right through the House of Commons and right through number 10 Downing Street because this could be, many fear, the top of the Tory party, the first of a number, possibly even many MPs who might be willing to defect. Why? because they think they've got nothing to lose. So many of my colleagues in that place in the Conservative Party do back me on this privately. Obviously, they won't put their head above the parapet. I don't expect them to. I've written a column for the Sun today saying I think that they've got three options. One is stick with Rishi. That's what he wants them to do, stick with the plan. But that's a pretty scary thing to do when you're on, in some polls, 27 points behind Labour. We are looking at electoral annihilation. An awful lot of Tory MPs not just losing their jobs, but their livelihoods, the ability to pay their mortgage all out on their ear. Um, that's not what they're looking for. So what is their second option? Well, they could follow Lee Anderson. They could go and join Reform UK. I don't know, maybe some of them might want to go and join the Liberal Democrats. Who knows, depending on what their party affiliations really are secretly, which rosette they really want to wear. Um, but the third option, of course, is something which we are already hearing about, and maybe more in the coming days and weeks, is yet another possible plot to unseat yet another Tory Prime Minister. I've lost count of how many we've had uh, since 2010 or even been since 2019. But there is always the possibility against everything any party strategist would ever tell you that there could be yet another Tory leader, Tory prime minister before the next election. Anything could happen. It's not controversial to be concerned about illegal immigration. It's not controversial to be concerned about legal migration. It's not controversial to be, you know, worried, concerned about the Metropolitan Police and a failing London Mayor. I think classically, whenever anyone is called controversial, it usually means they're just saying what ordinary people think, because it's controversial to the metropolitan political media classes, uh, not to actually ordinary voters who just go, well, yeah, that's what I think. It's what I say at home. It's what I say in the pub. And it's what all my workmates and I talk about as well. He says things like tougher policing, cutting immigration, sending, deporting people who arrive here illegally out of the country. This really isn't controversial to most people. Most people agree with him. And he's been on a very long political journey. I mean, uh, he was, you know, he used to be a Labour councillor. Uh, he then stood to be a Tory MP, Red Wall uh, Tory, um, and, and now going over to reform. Um, to a certain extent, I would argue he hasn't kind of left those parties. I would say those parties have kind of left him. And an awful lot of Tories feel the same way. When he got suspended for his supposedly controversial, which he even he admits, and I would agree, were clumsy, badly worded comments about uh, Sadiq Khan uh, and, uh, and Keir Starmer. Everyone forgets it was about Keir Starmer as well, about the Islamists being in control, London and those two men. Um, you know, the, the support from the Tory party members, the support from Tory party voters was huge and loads and loads of MPs know that and know that the decision to suspend him and insist that he apologises wasn't going to go down well with their members. They see that as a signal of weakness by Rishi Sunak and the party. They see that as a signal that what they think, which is what Lee Anderson thinks, isn't welcome anymore. I'll be welcome reform because I like Lee Anderson. Yep, simple as that. Well, he got kicked out of the Tory party basically. And it was saying what we all think. It's going ridiculous. We've got a first past the post system. It's winner takes all, which basically means you pretty much get the two biggest parties, Labour and the Tories, winning pretty much all the seats, even when you know smaller parties go back to the SDP, Liberal Democrats, Green Party, UKIP, even when they stand and they've got a load of candidates and huge support in the country. You know, some of these parties have got up to you know 25% support at, at, at various times. It doesn't translate into MPs sitting on the benches, so they don't get much power. This is the first Reform UK uh, MP. Whether there'll be more, whether there'll be any 
after next election is is one thing. But Reform UK may well play the same role that the Brexit Party did um, under you know similar leadership as the uh, UK Party did previously as well, where basically uh, they pushed the Tories to become more Tory. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. And quite frankly, some of them need to get out more. I made some remarks a few weeks back about the London Mayor, for which I was stripped of the whip in the, from the Conservative Party. And let me be clear right now, on this stage, I will not apologise. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country. We've seen these polls in the past, haven't we? Whether it was a you know, Brexit vote, um, 2019, you know, these totally unpredicted results, even actually you know, 2015 when the Tories won a majority, we were told the coalition government had been so unpopular that actually a lot of people, they're not on Twitter, they're not shouting about it, they don't go on marches in the streets, but they just quietly go out to the polling station and vote when the election day comes. I think the Labour Party are so far ahead now that even though there may well be millions of those voters, it's not enough to change the actual narrative to actually see the Tories winning. A year ago, I'd have said, yeah, the Tories could still win, maybe a minority government. Now, on, you know, on current policies, on current polling, I don't see that happening. The conventional wisdom would suggest that if you really did want to be the next Tory leader, whether you are um, Kemi Badenoch, whether you're Penny Morden, Suella Brubman, Robert Jenner, Grant Chaps, and we know all of those people, oh, a lot with Tom Tugan and others, would love to be the next Tory leader. If you really want to be a Tory leader, do you want to do that just a few months before a likely general election when you will lose and you'll get the blame? You might argue that's a bit of a silly thing to do. Why not wait until after the election is lost and then seize the reins of the leadership? But that's the issue. What if, if you wait, you're no longer an MP because your seat is so at risk? And as we know, pretty much any seat the Tories have is at risk now. We've seen some huge by-election uh, overturnings of massive, uh, massive uh, uh, majorities for Tories. Journalists in the room will realise that this is the first time ever in British political history that the two big parties of the state were thoroughly and soundly beaten. It may well be, again, you've got a lot of MPs, a lot of would-be Tory leaders with nothing to lose. But equally, you've got a prime minister with nothing to lose as well. I think it's going to be a very, shall we say, feisty few weeks and months ahead. Well, I'm delighted to stand here as the newly elected MP for Wellingborough. Yeah! It's very interesting looking at Labour riding high in the polls and actually when they sort of you know, go down into it and dig into what voters are saying, it's a bit of a, for a lot of voters, there are diehard Labour voters, of course, but a lot of people are going... They can't be any worse than what we've got at the moment. And this lot have had 14 years to get it right and they haven't got it right. I'll give the other guy a go. That seems to be largely what a lot of voters are saying. But yeah, I mean, Labour just have to sit tight, not sort of blow themselves up and just leave the Tories to do all the work for them, which is what they have been doing. It's often said that governments lose elections rather than oppositions win elections. So it's about the economy. It's about leadership. But. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's an element where the Tories have just been in power so long. They just think, well, it's, you know, it's what we do. We don't have to worry. No one's going to elect the Labour Party. They didn't under Neil Kinnock or Ed Miliband or Jeremy Corbyn, although that came a bit close. They weren't under Keir Starmer. Maybe they just don't really believe the polls. Well, they've been untrustworthy before, but I wouldn't be putting all my eggs in that basket if I was a Tory MP with a majority under, I don't know. 50,000.